some yellow cards, a couple issue to both clubs. But other than that, a back and forth championship final so far as we are just one minute into this second half of this championship final. If it stays at nil-nil, or even if both teams score 1-1, as Croatia has a chance in the box now. But Paul back in, shot, scores! Oscar Cordon! This game is over from Warrior Field in Waterloo, Ontario, the home of the University of Waterloo Warriors. The final whistle has been blown, and Toronto, Croatia are your 2015 Canadian Soccer League First Division champions. Turned over though, another chance. Whiteman the delivery, and it's a cracking strike from the Vaughn striker, and he equalizes here in the 39th minute. The leading scorer, Jarek Whiteman, adds to his tally, and that's number 18, and equalizes this match. It's one all. Amato. Up. Can Whiteman counter? He can. Whiteman, he wins the ball. He's on a breakaway here. The strike! Into the corner it goes, and the Azzurri's leading scorer gets the equalizer once again. And it's all tied up 2-2 two to two in the 57th minute. Jarek Whiteman with number 19 on the season and his second of the match. The Chiara now with the delivery. Back post. The header back in. The Azzurri with a chance. It's a box and in the back of it. And it's number three for Jarek Whiteman. The hat trick converted. 3-2 in the 60th minute. You're watching and listening to Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk Footy Edition with Nicholas Fiore. Welcome back, everybody, to Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk, episode number 50, an historic episode of the show and footy edition number 11. Happy New Year, everyone, and happy New Year to yourself. Jonathan Osorio, the next guest on the show, Toronto FC and Canadian men's national team midfielder. Ozo, thanks for uh, joining the show. Yeah, man, it's my, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We've had your friends on. I've had Lucas Cavallini. I've had Cava. I've had Richie Larea. Cava's like, don't worry, I'll get you Ozo. I'll get you Ozo. So months <laughs> later, Ozo's on. So I really do appreciate it, though. I know you're busy, man. Yeah, no, of course. Um, you know, Luca brought it up to me. And I said, yeah, of course, no, no problem. I know you guys are friends, so it's the, it's the least I could do. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Listen, let's get into it uh, right away. How does this sound, Ozo? Toronto FC record for most appearances. That's, that's loyalty at its finest, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been lucky. I've been blessed to, to be able to, to play for my hometown and, and to um, have played in that many games. And yeah, I'm, you know, right now I'm the, the leader for appearances and and that's amazing, you know, like, you, you know, these days in football, it, it, you know, a lot, yes, yes, a lot of it has to do, you know, with loyalty and loyalty uh, between clubs and players these days is a little bit difficult to come by just because the business side of things has, has really, it has really come to light and, and at the end of the day, that is important for both sides. But in my case, you know, I've been lucky that it, it has, it has, benefit both of us both sides and and yeah i'm just i'm happy to be able to play for for my hometown absolutely obviously your your hometown born in the city born in toronto um grew up in in brampton of course um but you know you've played in youth clubs like brampton youth clarkson then you went to uruguay for nacional for a couple uh couple years as well what um what has been you know a memory for you or a big thing for you in your youth days or someone that helped you in order to maybe make that push into the pro ranks? Yeah, I think um, I've had a few uh, people um, that have really helped me. Um, I wouldn't say a lot, uh, but yeah, there was a few. I mean, one, you know, this question I've been asked a few times and the one person I always say, um, well, first off is obviously my father, you know, I've been lucky to have that support from my parents, really, really good support in, in chasing my dreams. And, and my father was who introduced me to, to the sport, of course, for his love uh, for, for football. And, and so, of course, him. 
Um, and as far as, you know, from the, from the outside, um, um, you know, my coach at Clarkson, Juan Cruz Real, who is now uh, coaching in Colombia in the first division for a big club in Colombia, junior. Um, you know, he was, he was uh, vital in my, my growth as a player and also vital into preparing me to go to, to Uruguay. Um, so, yeah, uh, for sure him, I think in my youth days, he, he really helped me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a few others out there. You know, of course, my teammates at the time as well. Um, but for sure, Juan and, and George Armua and the people at Clarkson Soccer Club actually really, um, you know, really did a lot for, for, for myself and, and, and even for players like Lucas, Lucas Cavallini and a couple others that, that went with us to Uruguay and got that opportunity. Is it crazy to you to think that, you know, you made you maybe have had opportunities elsewhere or whatever worked or didn't work, but you've almost, you've stayed at home your entire pro career because you don't see that. Let's be honest. You don't see that much. I mean, SC Toronto back in 2012, when, you know, the CSL was, was sanctioned um, within, you know, Canada soccer, soccer Canada, and then TFC, like 236 appearances, 33 goals. I mean, CONCACAF Champions League, MLS Cup, uh, you got the golden boot in that CONCACAF Champions League. Is it just, have you ever like sat back and thought about, man, like I'm playing pro and I'm living my dream here and I didn't even have to go elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, there's, there's, been a couple of times obviously where you you sit back and you reflect and i i think i think for people and and for players it's hard to really realize that uh in the moment what um you know because you're you're so focused on the next move the next move the next day the next whatever you're just focused on improving um and 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 being better every day that you forget you know the the road that you, you've been on and that you're taking in the journey, but no, there's been a, a few times where I've been able to reflect and yeah, I've been lucky. Like, uh, you know, I've been, it's a lot of hard work. You know, I keep saying I've been lucky, but it's, it's taken a lot, a lot of hard work and, and um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, I think um, even myself, <laughs> you know, and people from the outside, I think won't, I think we won't really appreciate it until you know, the end, whenever that may be. So, yeah, I think that's when it, it, will, it will really, really be appreciated. Yeah, you have, a long, you have a long time, man. You have a long time. You're only 29. Yeah, yeah. You have a long time yeah, to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. I, I, don't, I don't plan on stopping anytime <laughs> soon. So, yeah, I think at the end, it will be really appreciated. I think right now, obviously, you know, even for myself, like sometimes you kind of uh, forget that you know everything that you've that i've been through and stuff so it's normal it's, it's part of you know everybody goes through it and i'm just you know just focus trying to focus on staying um uh, staying valuable for this club absolutely and and you speak of the hard work you speak of the val you know how valuable that you know you've grown to be you know within the club and obviously that leads to canada right and the senior men's national team 49 apps now seven uh seven goals since 2013 with canada how how honored i guess are you i know it's a it's a cliche question and maybe a cliche answer but in your opinion you know you probably have to work your tail off to get to that spot right so how hard you know did you have to work and how honored are you to play for canada and and try to qualify for this upcoming world cup on a consistent basis now yeah it's of course it's an honor and a huge honor uh, now more than ever, I think obviously the the prestige for for being on the national team now is has come a long way. And um, yeah, I mean, even when I made my first appearance, it was an honor, something that I, I dreamed of, something that I, I looked forward to as a kid. And now, where where the national team has come, and the players in it, and and everything involved in it. Um, you know, right now, currently, we're first place in 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 Concacaf for for qualifying, and and you know that that that's tough to do. It's not easy. You have to be a very good team to be in that position after you know six games and or no eight games, I think. And um, so, 
it, it's it's just it's an honor because it's it's prestigious to be on the team now. It's not easy to get on this team. It's not easy to even to 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 get on the team to play. It, it it's it's growing at a fast pace and and yeah, of course, every time yeah. you get called to the national team, that's like the highest honor you can get. I, when I spoke to Cava, I spoke to Richie Larea. I even had Dwayne De Rosario on the show, and and they said that you know, well, Dwayne from afar, of course, Diro from afar said, you know, there looks like there's a belief, and and Cava mentioned that there's like a there's a real true belief in the camp, in the squad now. In your opinion, you know, with games coming up against Honduras, USA, El Salvador at the end of the month in January, and then February uh, with a game as well. How much of belief is there with John Herdman leading that you guys can get it done? You can and will make the World Cup in Qatar in 2022. Yeah, and huge belief. Uh, I think I, feel, I think we we've had that belief for a long time now, even before you know this, you know, we before we went into this final round, this final octagonal. Um, we we always this was always the goal. This was the goal when John Herman and his staff came in, you know, uh, the goal was Qatar 2022. And so we believe for a long time and the belief just keeps growing and growing. The confidence within the group grows and grows. And yeah, if you ask anybody that's a part of the national team, I think now if you ask anybody watching, I think they'll say that, yeah, we believe that Canada will be at the World Cup in 2022 in Qatar. So yeah, it's it's amazing to be a part of. You know, it's a, it's a brotherhood over there, and and everybody that's a part of it, from you know the 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 head coach, the the staff, um, everybody behind the scenes, the players, of course. It's it's pretty amazing to be a part of. Do you remember Ozo January twenty second, twenty seventeen, with the national team? You remember what happened that day? January twenty second, twenty seventeen. I want to say, I want to say that that was the first, my first goal. There it is. National team. Your first goal for the national team. It was against the Bermuda in a friendly. So yeah, yeah. How, how was the selly? Was the celebration still crazy or was it more low key? Cause it was a friendly goal. <laughs> no, it was very low key. <laughs> yes. Because it was so friendly. And another reason was because we were actually, we started that game losing. So <laughs> that, that, that game, uh, that game, we, we that goal tied the game up, and then shortly after, we ended up taking the lead, and and we ended up winning the game. It was a little bit of a crazy game, actually. Uh, we won the game four two. Um, yeah, but that was at a time in twenty seventeen. There was a lot of changes happening at, at, at in Canada soccer. So, um, but yeah, that was yeah. I remember that. That was my first goal in in, in Bermuda. That's it in Bermuda. So you know. It, it's always special when you score your first or 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 your first appearance, um, your first pro appearance for TFC, March 9th, 2013. You came on for Terry Dunfield. What was going through your mind? You know, your first game, it, you, you probably grew up or, or, or lived not too far from Bemo Field, right? You know, it's how how crazy and surreal was that moment? Yeah, it was a great moment, a dream come true for me um you know my, my family was in the stands and actually it's crazy it wasn't even at bmo field it was at roger center uh because that was oh, the home that's opener right. that's right it was the whole it was the home opener against kansas city and um i think at that time the the, the field wasn't ready yet so we had to play the first one at, at roger center so actually yeah my first game uh, for tfc was at roger center and we, I came on, we ended up holding the, the, the lead and we, cause I think we had the lead at two, one at that point and we won the game and against a really good team too. Um, so a special, a special day, a special moment for me. And, and yeah, that was, that was the start. I have one more date for you. A couple of weeks later, March 30th, 2013 against the LA galaxy. You remember that day? Yeah, I remember that day. That was first that goal. was my first that was my first goal. My first goal and my first uh also my first appearance at BMO Field. You so, see how that works? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, amazing day to um that goal actually uh gave us the lead in that in that moment in the game and it was my first goal. 
uh, against LA Galaxy. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing moment. I, I remember it, you know, perfectly. And my, 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 I remember I actually caught my dad in the, in the stands on the way back to the halfway. I saw him. And sometimes that's hard to see from, from the field. It's hard to, to find your family because there's so much people, but I, I saw my dad and we, we had eye contact. So it was, a, it was, it was a special moment. Um, they ended up tying the game, unfortunately, uh, on the last, uh, one of the last plays, you know, I, I think it would have been even that much sweeter if that was the game winning goal, but regardless, it was my first goal and, and we, we tied the game and yeah, special day. You remember your dates also. Cause let me tell you something. I've spoken to a lot of players. They don't remember nothing. <laughs> yeah it's tough <laughs> it's tough you know so many so many dates so many uh <laughs> so many so many uh moments yeah the, the, those, those dates you know they just i don't know i i have a pretty good memory when it comes to that stuff and um actually i know the date i knew the date for sure uh the, the first goal for the canadian team actually i wasn't sure of but i had a, i had a feeling um and then um the date for the goal um you know i i have actually the, the ball the game ball um as a souvenir and i i the, the club did a, a nice thing they they put the date and, and and all the information on the ball so that's how I, that's how i remember it because i see the ball it's it's here in my in my place so i see it every now and then amazing amazing um listen let's talk about you know this this these seasons, I guess, you know, a couple past COVID seasons, if you can say, um, and, and coming into, you know, this upcoming season starting when, I guess the end of February, March, right. Is the, you know, MLS is, MLS is back, I guess the start of the season, how different or is it different at all? Really? I would think it, I would imagine that it is playing during COVID. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's different for sure. Um, the fans and in the stands little, probably the most major difference, correct? Yeah, for sure. I mean, playing without the fans that was uh, that was weird. That was as professionals, you you get on with it, of course. You know, you don't let it be uh, uh, a factor or anything. You know, you play the game, and at the end of the game, it's a game of football, whether there's one person watching or or tens of thousands. But it's different. It's different. The energy is different in the stadium um yeah and then you you know you're dealing with things outside of the game too uh during the weekend stuff like testing you know often and and not knowing you know if you're going to be negative the next test or whatever it's uh it's a little bit you know just it's a lot going on it's a lot different for sure um last year by um obviously we were living away from toronto for the first half of the season that was different, even though we are playing with fans and stuff now at the away games, our home games are still with no fans and, and we weren't even playing in Toronto. So that was, that was difficult. A lot of, there's a lot of difficult things for sure. It's way different and uh, it's definitely not, it's, it's much better with fans in the stands, full, full stadium, full capacity, you know, that, that is, is the best and there's nothing that can really be that. When you first started with TFC, let's, uh, you know, let's be honest, there were some struggling seasons, right, with, with, with the club since 2013. But then slowly and slowly it was getting better. You know, MLS Cup appearances, players were coming in, and, and there was a, a, a true, I guess, changing of the guard with TFC. Obviously, the MLS Cup in 2017. Um, but how, how – we I don't know if I can use the right word weird or just – because you've been there through it, right? You, you've been through it all. Is it like crazy to see the struggling times to, you know, okay, maybe this past season was a struggle as well, but most of the last, let's say five seasons have been pretty damn good, right? Have been pretty successful. Is it crazy to see the struggling times and to where you personally maybe, and even the club has come because sometimes it takes decades more than just, years and it took several years but finally tfc is where you know it was and where it should be yeah um you know i i 
I joined in 2013, and at that time, it was still uh, we were still struggling. Um, 2013 was kind of a new a new era because we had a new coach going into that season, but still uh, a struggling team. We weren't a contender yet or anything like that. And then 2014 is when you really saw the ambition and from from MLSE uh, one, and then from 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 bringing in front office people that were going to change this club for the better. Yeah. And, you know, Tim Lewicki, I think was, was a, was a big uh, factor in that when he started bringing these big players, he started signing these big DPs and players to come to the club. And that's the start of when TFC started to, you know, um, really change its reputation. Um, that 2014 season, we still didn't make the playoffs, but, I think it, with everything, you know, with the, the stadium renovation and the players that came in, um, it, it was the start. And then little by little, every season we got better. Um, you know, we brought in even more players. Um, and then by 2016, we made the MLS Cup final. We ended up losing in penalties and then to come back the next season and to win. And then, you know, we really put ourselves, we really, we really made an identity. And, and that's what Toronto FC, I think, was missing all those years. And so I think, yeah, we've made an identity for the club. And I, and I grew along with the club, I think, every year. The club was getting better. I was also improving. So it's nice. It's, it's, it's nice that, you know, it's, it's amazing that that has gone hand in hand. And, and, yeah, it's amazing to see Toronto FC is the club that it is now. And, you know, aside from last season, which was difficult because, you know, for all the Canadian teams, we, I think we had it a little bit more difficult than every other team and and then for many other reasons obviously we didn't have a great season um so we are back to our low but i think this season you know last season will not change the fact that toronto fc is still now known as a big club here in in, in this side in this league and i think th that this year will prove that you know we're still at the top and we're still five we're still looking at ourselves as as a team that always wants to contend and that's the expectation. So yeah, it's, it's crazy that that's, that's where, where the club has come now. And, and you can see it even with the signings that we're doing, you know, this year with Insignia. Yeah. You know, and, and we're going to, we're going to touch upon that uh, briefly, but you, you made, you made sure the, uh, the Montreal reporter knew how many cups TFC had eh, over Montreal. You made sure that was that, that happened. <laughs> Yeah, because you know, I I I was being very civil actually. If you, if anybody, I don't, I saw I don't, it. maybe I not. Saw a, it. Yeah, if, if a lot of people, if you if you see the whole interview, I was being very 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 civil, you know, to the Montreal media, and I was praising their team for, for the yeah. season that they're having and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but but then she asked the last question and she kind of chuckled, and I took it a little bit to offense because she chuckled in my face, and I said, oh okay. <laughs> okay, so I had I had to. Uh, I'll show you the Brampton Toronto way. <laughs> I just had to, I had to remind her of listen, Montreal. You're having a great season, but rem a reminder of which is the bigger club still, and which club has the trophies that come along with it. So that that's all it was, and and yeah, I ended up going a little bit viral. So um, yeah, that was that was. It fun. was great. I don't care, man. It, it was great, man. That's all. That's all. I know you can't say too much about it, but it was, you know, it, it was great. You can see that little Toronto Montreal rivalry that wasn't even going to be, but Hey, you did the yeah, job yeah. in the professional way. You might as well get it done. Right. <laughs> I, I think it'll always be a rivalry. You know, that's the thing. Like no matter what, no matter what's happening in both of the, the, the team seasons, <laughs> when, when we play each other, it's, it's about winning that game. That game is important to win. Oh, yeah. no matter what so you got to have that edge over your rival and, and and that's kind of what it was at that point absolutely listen also uh you know 2016 i was there in the stands and man that was that was yours that was tfc's to to lose right and it just unfortunate penalty shots penalty kicks anything can happen but then 2017 i was there again and it was all tfc it was it was yours to lose again and and you won and and you won I feel like almost you guys won the right the right way. How how crazy, how great did that feel finally winning the club's first MLS Cup in in a record franchise breaking season? Yeah, amazing. It was like it was honestly really the icing 
on the cake, um, you know, a, a really a, a perfect season. Uh, we won every trophy that, that, that you could possibly win. And so amazing, amazing, because we had also a lot of pressure going into that last game um, to win that game because of the season that we had. We were always the favorite, and, and when you're the favorite, you have that pressure to win. And and there was a lot of pressure on us just because they're adding the fact that there's this, they're making the story that, you know, if we were to win, we'd be the best, you know, probably the best MLS team in, in, in the history of the league. And if we lost, that that wasn't the case. So, um, and that if we lost, then the whole season was you know, it was for nothing kind of thing. So we had that, I felt like we had that kind of pressure going into this game, but we won the game. And so, you know, it, it, it was amazing to, to accomplish that, um, you know, and to winning MLS Cup in my hometown. And you can't ask, you can't ask for more. Can't ask for more. And obviously the, the CONCACAF Champions League was a fantastic, for, I'll be completely honest with you, it was a fantastic success as well. I mean, these guys, these guys from Mexico, I, I was, I had the tunnel, tunnel access, right. For every home game, uh, got lucky enough to have tunnel access for every home game of that CONCACAF Champions League run. And, uh, there was that one game, I think it was raining in the rain. My sister ended up going back in, but I stayed out and, uh, I think it was maybe against Tigres and it was raining. It was cold. Oh my God. And it, and the way you guys won and, and pulled it out. You know, it was just, I saw in as a media guy, but a fan and, you know, know some of the guys within Canada and MLS and all that stuff. And it's just crazy to see how much respect that TFC and Canada soccer didn't have. And that run for club wise almost showed that no, no, no. Toronto's here. Canada soccer is here or it's coming. Is that more of an important to you guys more than even just, yeah, playing for your club, pl playing for your country, but the bigger picture in saying, no, no, no we're not afraid anymore. Or we were maybe never afraid, but now we're really going to take it to you club and country. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it, as soon as we won the MLS cup and I mean, as soon as we knew, as soon as we won the Canadian championship, um, that was, you know, it was going to be an objective for the next season, especially with the team that we had. We had pretty much everybody come back. And for, for this run as well, for the Champions League run, it was a huge objective of ours. And you can even say we, we risked everything in that Champions League. We kind of risked our league, uh, the league that season, to try and get this trophy and be the first uh, MLS club in the history to win in, in, in the new era of Champions League. So... It was a great run. I think, you know, we've been the closest to, to win it. Um, I know a couple of clubs uh, have come close now more recently, but I think we are the closest getting to penalties. And, 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 on, the, and on the way, we had to beat, you know, three really, giants. really big giants of, of giants. Mexico. And I think before that, it was, it was not heard of to do this. You know, it, was, it, had never, it had not happened. Mexico was always way ahead of the MLS teams, but we were going to, you know, playing against these teams and, and playing better than them and, and deserving to win. And um, so it was, you know, I think in, in Canada and in soccer in Canada, it was the beginning of the change that you were beginning to see and of, of, you know, football in this country starting to catch up to, to Mexico and to United States. So, yeah, that was a great run, a memorable run for, for the club, for, for, you know, for my, for, for everybody in the city and, and even, you know, for myself, uh, it's too bad we couldn't win because as, as good of a run that was, I think it will not ever, it won't ever really be appreciated because we didn't win at the end of the day. And in sports, this is what matters. Um, I know, of course, you, you mentioned how important it was and, and you can appreciate it because you know, but you know, the, 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 not the everyday football fan is going to see and see that we didn't win and, and, in sports, that's all that matters. So, unfortunately, that's the case. But I mean, for me personally, it will, it will, it will, it was a great, great moment. No, it's a moment you're never going to forget. It's a, it's as simple as that, right? It's, it's one of those moments, and like you said, the average everyday fan will be like, ah, they didn't win. They did okay, but you know, there's, there's so much more to it. And, and by the way, if I was the coach of the team, 
I would have risked the season as well to go for that CONCACAF Champions League because that is just, yeah, as a player on the team, you're probably like, well, I don't know, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there, but that Champions League run needed everything. It did. No, yeah. At the end of the day, it did, and it was a risk that really you didn't even have that much of a, I wouldn't say a failure of a season. I mean, yeah, you didn't make playoffs, but I mean, it wasn't, I don't know, atrocious, I guess we can say. It wasn't bad, bad. Like, you guys were still competing in games. It's just that Champions League, you had to go for it. And and, yeah. and I'm glad, honestly, I'm glad you guys did. I'm glad Vanny and or and, and everyone involved said, we're going to go for it. And obviously it wasn't favorable at the end. But man, you guys gave it all you got. You know, a team from lo, lo, lonely Toronto, right? Taking on Tigres and Club America and, and Guadalajara. Like, man, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think exactly. I mean, in a tournament like that, especially with the travel and then you have midweek games in between uh, with the amount of games, the amount of travel, it was impossible to <coughs> to balance both. You know, we had to put everything into Champions League and, and, and even the travel. I mean, the travel affects everybody, whether you play or not. So then even the guys that maybe weren't playing the Champions League games, they had to play in those MLS games. But they're going into those games a little bit, uh, you know, at a disadvantage with the with the travel and everything that they have to deal with. So it was tough. It's it's tough, and anybody that that goes through a Champions League run knows that and knows how it feels. But yeah, like like you said, uh, we went for it, and I think you're seeing more and more. You know, each year that the MLS teams that are in it are going for it, and so you'll see that again this year. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I hope that you know we. Toronto FC, we're looking to get back into that tournament because we that is still an ambition of ours. Well, hey, you you got my you got you got the you know, Euro Cup, my Italian boy Insigne coming coming to town, so that's gonna help you uh, help you guys as as well. Listen, also, I got just a, a few more questions until we wrap this up. Everyone, if you're tuning in now, Jonathan Osorio, episode fifty, footy edition number eleven of Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk from TFC and the Canadian men's national team. This episode is sponsored by the bottom line restaurant and bar downtown Toronto, 22 front street, uh, official restaurant of the hockey hall of fame. Listen, also, you know, with, with, you know, the signing of Lorenzo Insigne, like, you know, like we, like we just mentioned, you know, the average fan might say, wow, like this is like, this shouldn't happen. Um, You know, how, how is this happening? Uh, he's in Italy, Serie A, Euro Cup, blah, blah, blah. And, and you could keep on going on. But, you know, clearly he wanted to do it and 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 it's going to be, you know, lucrative for him as well. But how crazy is it to get a guy like Lorenzo Insigne? Because, you know, if it's fair to say, as much as I, I love him and I want, I want him to come on the show, but Sebastian Jovinko was maybe, you know, not at that level with Juve as... Insigne is with Napoli right now. Are you seeing this social media stuff where you say, no, it's going to ruin his career. He might not get called up for Italy and, and all this stuff. Or is it more focused as no, now he's going to be your teammate come July. Um, and, and he's that superstar. You've played with superstars already, but now let's get this team to the next level. And almost like a forget where he's coming from. He's my teammate. And let's see how, how we can do. Yeah, I'm, well, for me personally, I, I, I'm not looking at uh, the negative and, and him coming for sure. I'm not going to look at the negative. It's only the positive. And yeah, this is huge for the league. It's huge for the club. It's huge for the city. I think for, for a guy like this to, to, to choose to come here um, at, the stage, uh, at the stage he is in his career as well. I mean, this is a guy that this past summer or last summer won the Euro Cup with uh, with Italy as the number 10 for that team. Um, so it, it's crazy. It's huge. It's huge. Um, you know, it, I don't know if uh, the league has seen a move like this from, you know, obviously the league has gotten very, very big names and bigger names, you could say. But um, as far as a player at this day, at this stage in his career, where 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 Insigne is coming, it's 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 huge, and I think it's only going to help our club. It, it 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 shows the ambitions that the club has and and the expectations they have, and and where they want the club to be, uh, going forward. So, it's amazing. I'm excited. I'm excited to 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 play with him, 
I mean, he, I don't think he comes to, he's not coming till June. Um, but um, yeah, it's going to be very exciting for the city. Hey, Market Lane and, and Little Italy downtown, it's going to be popping, Ozo. When Insigne That's coming, it's going <laughs> to, we, we celebrated the year. Oh, I was at Market Lane, us Italians with Insigne there. Oh, my, Mamma Mia, for real. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. You know what? It's just, I can it's only just, imagine. Yeah, it's just, you know, us Italians. I mean, hey, Colombia, I know your background, right? Your parents are Colombian. Like, I got a Colombian friend as well, and or an Ecuadorian. Those South Americans, man, you you guys can party as well. But when Italy won the Euro, let me tell you, that party yeah. was, was – there was no COVID, let me tell you. There was no COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine, man. Yeah, that was – that was amazing. I, 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 you know, obviously, <coughs> I was watching the the Euro and following, of course, and and to see Italy win it the way they did at Wembley, amazing. And so, and you know, this is really good for the city because obviously, you know, we saw the impact that Seba Jovinko made when he came, and I expect Insigne to do, um, you know, the same thing. And and you know, the, the I I definitely will be expecting a lot more Italians at the stadium. <laughs> um, a lot of this. For, a lot of this in yeah, the stands. Yeah, a lot also. of that. A lot of that. <laughs> and so it's it's exciting, and it's, I think it's exciting for for everybody. I know. I'll be honest with you. Just as a fan in itself, and and you know, like a guy that knows some people in there, and it, it'd be nice to see Seba come back as well. I we I know we probably can't touch upon that too much, but it'd be nice to have him back because what he did for the club, for the city, um, it was great. And and to have Toronto FC back in there, like Bill Manning said not just win the league. We want the FIFA club world cup. Like we want it all. Um, so it's, it's really good to see the progress. That's for sure. Unfortunately though, with the progress being made with Toronto, one of your, your boys, one of your friends, right? Richie Larea moving on to Nottingham forest. Um, the second division in England, uh, you know, they're gearing up for a second half run to qualify, to uh, get the promotion for the EPL um, I spoke to Richie, you know, I congratulated him as well, uh, that moving on, of course, right? Obviously, maybe more lucrative here, but it's a dream. And he followed his dream to Europe and to England. How happy are you? Uh, obviously, you're going to miss him, of course, and we all are, especially with him, you know, trying to get into a fight every game. But that's another side. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. We're kidding. I talked to him about that. But, uh, you know, how how – happy and proud are you that you know Richie's moving on to not just to England but you know to his dream that he's wanted for a while I'm happy of course I can only be happy uh for for my friend and, and my teammate um you know a guy that's you know he had a dream to go to Europe as 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 most kids do as we all do um and you know uh, for him he, he deserves it with the seasons that he's had the last few seasons and his success with the national team, you know, obviously all of that has, has gained him interest from overseas. And, you know, it's great that it, it, it all came together for him. Um, you know, everybody that was involved, um, you know, Nottingham, you know, showing that interest and believing in him and TFC also, you know, cooperating and, and, get, and getting a deal done because sometimes these deals, you know, don't, don't, are not, easy and I imagine his wasn't I don't know much about it but and then the day it happened they uh, I know TFC uh, I know wish they could have kept Richie but also they didn't want to keep him from his dream of going to Europe and I think that that is important that is important for the club to show that so great on Richie um, he's moved on to a really good league I think a league that um, I don't think he will be a part of very long because uh, he will keep moving up and and yeah. and so um yeah you know we wish him we wish him all the best over there and i know he's gonna do great without uh getting you in trouble or 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 uh and and just answer the question the right way obviously you know everyone wants to play in europe right and everyone has aspirations to and i spoke to kava he, he's cavallini he said the same thing um touched upon it a little bit with rich and They've answered it the correct way, which was, which was, I understand why. Obviously for yourself, I know you're happy with Toronto and I know you're growing with Toronto. I know you're a leader with TFC right now. Do you still possibly have those aspirations to get to an England or a Jay Chapman as you went to Dundee right now in Scotland or 
you know, Germany and Italy and France and Portugal are just in that European mindset or, you know, you know, you're a leader on this team and, and, and you're good. You're happy. <laughs> uh, you're good. As long as you say you're good, you're good. <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 I'm happy to be at TFC. I always will be. Of course. Um, I always will be. Like I said, everybody has, I, I've, I've actually said that I've had European dreams from, you can go back to my interviews long, long years ago. I've expressed that. So, you know, um, it, it's not as easy, I think, as people think that, yeah, I have a European dream, so I can go tomorrow. It doesn't really work like that. You know, a lot of things, and, and, and sometimes it doesn't even work like you can be playing good and you can, you can maybe look like, you know, People can think like, yeah, this guy can play in Europe, but it's not as easy as that. It's not as easy as this guy. Yeah, he can. He he's at that level. It's you know, a club has to be interested in you. It has to be the right timing. A lot of things go into it. Um, but you know, if an opportunity came for me, I'm open for it. Uh, of course, you know, it it depends. It also depends. It has to. I think it has to make sense. There's so um, many layers, but, right, Ozo? There's so oh, many there's layers, and it's oh, like there's I, a lot. It's, and, and a lot of people don't understand that, right? Like, yeah, like I said, yeah. the average fan doesn't understand that. But I mean, I've played, you know, a keeper for League One, and Jimmy Brennan was my coach in Aurora, and I had a scholarship to NCAA Division One, and then boom, tore my ACL, and and that's little stuff. But in the professional ranks, like I know some players, like you know Kwame and Chris Nanko with Forge FC, like there's so many layers into pro and contracts. A lot of people don't understand that side of it. Yeah, there's just there's that there's the really really technical stuff like the contracts and stuff but even like there's just a lot of factors there's definitely a lot of factors into a move happening it's sometimes not so easy as a plus b equals c you know it's 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 not it's not as easy as that sometimes but to answer your question if an opportunity was to come i would hope that you know if, if an opportunity came where i wanted to go to europe i would hope that toronto fc would see would respect my wish to 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 have that challenge um, with everything that I've, I think I've I've done for the club already. So, uh, and I think they would, to be honest, I think they would. But saying that, at the moment, I'm a Toronto FC player, and I love this city, I love this club, and as long as I'm here, I will be, I will work every day to to bring this club trophies and to make sure that you know, do my best and do my part uh, to contribute to TFC being one of the better teams on, on this side of, of, of the world. We know it, man. We know it because, you know, like we see, we see the passion. I mean, yeah, everyone's got passion when they play in every professional sport, every professional league, every professional team. But, you know, there's, there's certain guys that you see the passion with every, every tackle, every plancha, right? Every single, every single play, right? So, and we see that and, and, and we respect that from you. And when, when, you know, we, we have a player that maybe goes into a tackle half, 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 you know, halfway. And, and, and we, we know that the service is there from you. So that's why I just wanted to ask. And I appreciate you answering. I know, you know, it's a tough question in, in general, because there's uh what is it? The, the, the hot stones that you don't want to, you don't want to step on any, uh, anything, but you answered it. So I do, I do appreciate it. Um, just a couple more Ozo, as I want to talk about more of the, the your 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 youth because I have a lot of youth that uh, chime in and tune in. I coach rep soccer in Calvin Soccer Club with the under ten boys. I had under fifteen girls, so you know the twenty twelve boys, and and they're like, "Wow, coach, you spoke to this guy, you spoke to this guy." And I just want to ask you, you know, the, for your youth, you went to Uruguay a little bit. What's the crazy difference? Which I can, I honestly think it's it's big, even though it's still youth from your youth in Ontario with Brampton youth and Clarkson compared to your youth in Uruguay? Um, I, I think. Is it more the professionalism you know, environment? Would that be one? Yeah, a little bit. I would say, I mean, we, we, it's starting to change here. <laughs> um, you know, even the local clubs are, are having a little bit more professionalism to them, uh, added to them now, but. Yeah. Now we have even the Toronto FC Academy, which is you're in a professional system, in a, in a professional club team. Uh, and we have the three. We have, you know, uh, Toronto FC, Montreal and Vancouver. 
but here, if we're talking about here in Ontario, we have Toronto. Um, I think, I hope, you know, in the CPL that they will, that those teams will begin to, you know, work on their academy teams when the time is right. And I imagine that they are working on that. Um, so you'll have two more cl professional club teams yeah. for, for, for kids to be at. But even the local teams, it's important. It's important to, to be a part of these teams and, and the professionalism. But I would say in Uruguay that the structure and the system has been there uh, for, so, for, for very much longer than it has in Ontario. So there's a system that works there. And, 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 and that's the big difference, I would say. And then within you know, competing, you're competing against uh, kids that really being a professional football player is their only avenue out of, you know, out of the life that they live, you know, in that moment or, or their, their, it's their only opportunity to live a, a really comfortable life. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, that was, that was tough going down there, you know, fighting for your position and everything every day. Um, that's how it was. Whereas here, you know, you go to school and you, you go play at your local club and then, you know, you're at home, you have a roof over your head and food on your, on, uh, on your plate every night. And, and we're blessed here in Ontario that most kids have that, um, over there, it's, it's a bit different. And so, uh, you have to fight against these, these kids that are very, very motivated. And, and I think for me, that's, that's the big difference. Absolutely. It's, it's just when I, you know, when I spoke to Cavalini and you as well, like, it's crazy to see like 2010 to 2012, you know, born in 92 you're 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 not you're not uh you're not so so old let's just say going to Uruguay to play like you're you're young you're youth yeah. like did you guys what why like you know I the connection that you've had was that why you said okay let's go there because maybe that could be our opportunity to go pro after Yeah, I think the the whole idea was that you know we we got the connection from we we're lucky enough that at Clarkson we had that connection towards mm -hmm. South America and, and and Uruguay and 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 I think uh, Uruguay that you know the club that we went to is arguably the biggest club in the country and they have developed you know really really great players. I mean, one example that I think anybody any kid knows is Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez came from National Academy. And so when you hear those things, like, well, how, how can you not take that opportunity to be at that club and, yeah. and, and grow up in the same environment as that kind of player? So, yeah, we took that opportunity and, and we, we, at the moment, you know, like we, we didn't really, leaving home was, wasn't really, you know, we didn't really care to, to leave everything behind because this was our dream. And we were willing to sacrifice a lot for it. So it was hard, like very, very hard, like days that, you know, of course you miss your family. You don't have the best days and you don't have family there to go see and comfort you. You, you know, you're living, you live in, in a, in a, in a, in a residence with a bunch of other kids, you know, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of things going on, but it was a great experience for us. Uh, and the end of the day, at the end, you know, we, we took different pathways and, 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 and it worked for both of us. And, and we ended up, you know, me and Carolina, we ended up coming together again in the national team. So it's it's pretty amazing because that's really the goal that we had going down there. Full circle, man. Full full circle. And it's amazing to see. Listen, Ozo, um, I know you're busy. I know a lot of professional guys, even though, you know, I, I, I know the world. But, uh, you know, don't sometimes don't give my time, uh, your time to me, right, to chat. So... I appreciate you coming on the show more than you know. Hopefully we can uh, chat down the line. Um, maybe maybe you can help me get Jovinko on the show. I don't know. Well, how, how, much power, <laughs> how much power do you have? How much power do you have? <laughs> I'll see. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. No, no. I, I listen, though. I appreciate you coming on. I really do. And uh, best of luck with Canada in the World Cup qualifying. Uh, I'll be watching every game as always. Uh, we get together with the boys and we cheer you boys on. So... I did, I did though, I did though message Richie and we talked about getting Davies on the show. So we got to get Fonzie on as well. So you guys got some work to do in your off season still. You got a couple more weeks, okay? No, no. <laughs> Listen, I do appreciate you coming on though, man. Yeah, man, of course. My pleasure. And, and, and um, yeah, it was great. It was great uh, chatting with you, man. And I'd come on again whenever. So I appreciate you having me on.
Awesome. Maybe next time we'll do an Instagram live. Get the followers coming in. That's it. That's all we need. <laughs> Good idea. Um, everybody, this was episode number 50 and footy edition number 11, an historic episode of the show. This was Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk. Visit www.mamma mia. This is Fire Talk for merchandise. We got hats, as you see behind me. We got t shirts, long sleeves, and hoodies. This was Jonathan Osorio of Toronto FC, number 21 midfielder, and of the Canadian men's national team. Thank you, Ozo, once again. Best of luck in World Cup qualifying. Best of luck with TFC this season. Everyone, stay safe. Thank you for tuning in once again. And mamma mia. Lopez. Lopez turns it over. And now Cavallini with it. Cavallini finds Baker. Albanese comes out. Baker gets to it first. Around the keeper and in the back of the net. Blows the whistle. The captain, Dylan Carrero, for Woodbridge. A penalty kick. Steps up. And takes it neatly so with a great, brilliant penalty kick strike into the corner. The ref blows the whistle. Whiteman steps forward, looking. And right down the middle with the strike there and the penalty kick in the 19th minute. Anything coming, now a chance for Jason Mills. He comes in, the shot on goal. Off the woodwork again, the rebound comes out. The Mills again, shot scores! Oh my word, number 11 with the finish. And that's Brandon Mills. Oakville looking to play long instead of building up. It's going to favor them off the second ball. A chance for the Blue Devils. Can they get anything on goal? Goes back outside looking for the offside call. It's not. Now cross back in. Back door. It's a goal. And the Blue Devils are on the door first. Push back with good defensive play from North Mississauga. And they steal it. And now look at the counter. Can the Panthers go? It's 4v4. Good pace. Botello plays on the far side. They stay on side. North Miss an opportunity. They come on the break with a shot. In the back of the net it goes, and North Miss have one back. Continues with a North Mississauga free kick in midfield. An opportunity here, shot comes in, in the back of the net it goes. Oh my word, what a strike. Now back, kicked up in the air, one with the header. Place down, McNamara has the opportunity, and in the back of the net it goes. Corner kick now for Oakville. It's a dangerous one, and in the back of the net again, and it's McNamara. That was Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk Footy Edition with Nicholas Fiore. Thank you for watching and listening, and stay tuned for the next episode.